all the power in this great big gavel I've got. We'll call this meeting to order. <laughs> Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Call, please. Commissioner Stacy. Here. Commissioner Zoller. Here. Commissioner Wagner. I'm here. Okay. We we'll the signing of the journal, and I'll accept a motion to approve the DVD recording of the previous board session from Tuesday, March 18th, and the index of that meeting. Moved. Seconded. We moved and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Thank you. All right. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Anything anybody? Add. I'd like to touch on Senate Bill 155, if I could under business. Okay. We've got a whole list of things. Anything you want to add? Okay. All right. We'll start with old business then. Well, I'll let you go first with Senate Bill 155. Senate Bill 155. Before you, I don't forget it. <laughs> we finally got some good news. Uh, the joint ditch hearing bill we've been trying to work on for years and years and it's had several fall start. Now it's passed the House and the Senate. So all it needs is the governor's signature, and then we can do our joint ditch meetings by phone. And as a matter of fact, I'd start start scheduling them that way because he'll sign it within the next week or two. Okay. I haven't gotten anything yet, but okay. it'll be coming soon. And I, I, Mrs. Smith's the one that kind of prompted us to do that. I, I called her this morning and asked if she wanted to get down for the signing. He may or may not have a signing. It's kind of a small bill. Sometimes they don't have them for those things, but we may we may travel down and witness the signing of that bill okay. if he has one. Okay. It's been years in the years in the making. Mm -hmm. So close, so many times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good. All right, we have down the uh, dog warden and maintenance trucks. It's it was brought to my attention. We discussed this last year about potentially the dog warden getting some new vehicles and and us um, purchasing Kelly's for the maintenance department. Um, I know Mr. Zoller has uh, said a few times about the maintenance trucks looking pretty beat up and would like to see them getting into something different. So Sanford and Son, I think I used this. <laughs> and I think, but every time I use I see that truck, you said. <laughs> <laughs> the music starts playing in my head. So, so I figured I'd, I'd bring it up and see if um, I'm, I don't, what you guys wanted to do. We didn't put it in Kelly's budget, but she has the money available. Um, but she didn't budget in it since last year we kind of uh, decided we'd stick as is. I meant to talk to Dean this morning. I didn't. He didn't catch come him. in, and I didn't catch him. Are are they happy with the truck they have? Uh, Dean's thought is if he gets a new truck and he scratches it, he's gonna get. It, he uses the trucks, you know. If not that they bang them up or anything, but they run good. They it's, just. It's not costing us a bundle and. No, it. no, not yet. Not yet. Just doesn't. They're not the best looking. Trucks. I just think it doesn't reflect well on the county. When mm -hmm. I see county, I mean individually, yeah, we all buy new vehicles. Doesn't mean that our old vehicles are the wheels are running off them. But we just try to modernize mm -hmm. personally. And I, when I see the county running around in old beat up, dilapidated trucks, I just think it reflects poorly upon the county. It's like you know, what are we in a desperate situation here? And if we have the opportunity where we can uh, purchase a truck, you know, that is in a used truck that's in much better shape than the other, I I would recommend. It. I just think it's from an image standpoint. It just again when I see them driving around, I what's one's Lamont, which one's Fred? <laughs> does Kelly have a truck that she is? She needs to, I mean, potentially replace. Is that what the one part was? Um, we, the the two, well, she's got two of the two full size trucks, and then she has a smaller um, S10 or Ford Ranger. I don't know what the other one was. Uh, they're all good trucks. They all run good. No mechanical issues. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx her. But, you know, they're all, they're still in good condition. So, um, but we've talked about upgrading the trucks are for a while. Newer than, they're newer than the one the maintenance part. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, hers are 2006 trucks. And I think the maintenance is 96. Or, yeah, I mean, how many of us drive around a 1990 vehicle anymore? What do we expect to count on? I, I, you know, I wouldn't. 
I'm not totally against it, but I, if they're comfortable with that truck and you know, sometimes you like to throw tools in there and bang yeah. around a little bit, it just a little more comfortable. If, if it's not costing us money, I'm maybe we're searching for a problem that doesn't exist. I that's just my thought. I understand what you're saying. I, I, I do. Yeah. What's the cost? Uh, the a new the truck? dog board's got money to buy it, so that's a non general fund. Yep. The general fund would purchase the maintenance truck. How much? Um, I think we did. We, a, we purchased her truck. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. yeah. The, we would purchase her hand-me-down truck. She, she looked it up, uh, just fair value on Blue Book, and they were, I think they were under ten thousand. I would but think a, we never a discussed it. Six so. has got to be eight, seven, or something like that. I guess let's visit it if and when she finds a truck that she's interested in moving on. You know, she finds a deal that she doesn't want to pass up that helps her needs, mm -hmm. and then. You know, I, mean, I guess I'm kind of ready to get I, I, I love to rush it, but if she find, yeah. you know, if she's ready to buy a truck, we yeah. If can. you don't keep upgrading the fleet, eventually you'll be stuck with someday, and all of a sudden you got an outdated fleet, and you got to buy all these vehicles. I mean, we're buying ambulances. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got to update. Yeah. I mean, it's before the wheels run off of them. Yeah. Because yeah. eventually that's going to happen, and then it's going to start nickel and diamond at that. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. We can update yeah. all of her all of her prices on trucks with the yeah. new state term pricing, see what's out there. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Our next item listed just says dog ward in Sandusky County and that is not a typo. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> correct. It's not a typo. Um, we had talked a few months ago and actually it might have been into last year. <coughs> um, our dog warden will be off on medical leave for too long and she has had an application out there for like a part-time cleaner, part-time assistant dog warden to just cover the gaps. Um, Jeff had recommended maybe talking to surrounding counties to see if maybe they have part-time assistants that may just want to, you know, get a, lot, a little extra money and help us out. Um, Kelly was working with Sandusky County on uh, a different issue just about that time we were talking about it. So she had asked them, okay, would you be willing to help? So we've got their two part-time people have agreed, and we've got the employment paperwork. They're filling some of it out, um, but I have those on the agenda today. But they are both part-time. They'll stay part-time. The insurance will be covered under Sandusky counties. They will keep them under the health insurance. Um, since we do have, we will have the extra truck sitting there. We're going to let that that truck sit up to the Sandusky County <coughs> Dog Workers Office. So once they come on, they can come down here and will be our uh, acting assistants, our intermittent, our temporary. Uh, I thought that was a better solution than hiring somebody for two months or three months while she's on, she's having a baby. Um, then you got to train that person. These these folks are already familiar with the laws. Yeah. Uh, they know the end of and dog wardening. And that just made sense to me. Yeah, I, I think that's a workable solution. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for that update. From the EMS meeting, we know this is countywide meeting April 5th at 8 a.m. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> say anything? Um, <laughs> sure, we got a lot of people talking. We're gonna, I think we're going to have good attendance and uh, we're going to move this thing forward. And I think it's time. So, I, I, and I appreciate the support of the board coming to all those meetings. And um, so we've got a few, one, one more night, and then Monday, going following right into the meeting on April 5th. So. We got, we got a lot ahead of us. And, and we're going to have a session, a work session, April, April 1st, 1st, I believe. Mm -hmm. I've worked on a PowerPoint. I put a bunch of things together that uh, are my vision for the future, as well as uh, some of the ideas that I've shared with the uh, local governments. And we'll, uh, I don't have all the answers. I have more questions than I do answers. But uh, I think that's what mm -hmm. the leadership, the Seneca County leadership of local governments, including the board and the prosecutor and the <coughs> auditor and all of us come together and decide on which way we're going to go. We and I know the auditor has put together some outlines of, of yeah. costs for the different uh, townships and so forth. If the model is mm -hmm. decided to go after the Hopewell sure. Baskin type model. There's so a lot of different things we can do. That's one of them. And, and I've got the numbers for that. And we'll share that on April 1st for you guys, April 2nd and the fire chiefs. And then we're going to get together with all of the uh, township and village local government elected officials on the pit. I think it's uh, we're we're making some good progress. 
this is exciting. It's a, it's a really exciting time to be involved in EMS. Yeah. So. Right, thank you. And on that update, I just, uh, Holly has um, graciously taken the 26th at Big Springs. Springs. Um, the 31st is next Monday. We'll be in Seneca Township. And which, which one of you would like to attend? I think, let me look at my schedule here. I think I can. That doesn't work real well with me. Like Mondays and Wednesdays are kind of hard. Okay. Okay, so what are we, what day are we talking about? The 31st. Monday. Monday, the 31st of March. Hang on, let me figure this. I'm fine. Uh, where's it at, Big Springs? Uh, no, that one's in Seneca. 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 I'll get you the address. Right off County Road 6 before you get into Berwick. Yeah. Coming from the east. And that's at what time? 8 o'clock. 8? 8, 8, 8 p.m. p.m., okay. And the fire chief. for that. The fire chief. Monday the 31st. Yes, and the fire chief's meeting will be April 2nd at 7. If. The other week is that? Wednesday. Wednesday. That's Wednesday. Okay. And that's a special six. meeting they requested me to come just to do. And what time is that? 7 p.m. Um, I got regional planning. I can't do the second. I can do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. That's everything with that. Next item listed is vacation carryover policy. Yes, last year we had um, brought up some questions and concerns about the way our policy read on vacation, <coughs> basically vacation carryovers, and your request was to, the previous policy said, um, the employee must take vacation leave within two years, um, additional <coughs> vacation credits will accrue to an employee, the maximum vacation accrual. Uh, recruit will resume once the employee begins the accrued vacation and special with written approval from the appointing authority obtained prior to accrual beyond the two years an employee may accrue up to one additional years. You had asked to change it to one year and a one year carryover with the uh, under no circumstance the employee of ideal to continue it more than three years. Um, the new version of the policy manual John Croft had put that in there, but we didn't officially do it by resolution, so I wanted to bring that back up to you again. Um, the auditor's office actually caught that, that it was, he already had made the changes, but we need to officially do that if you guys still want to. And as we mentioned before, the elected officials can accept or reject our policy. Make a motion to adopt that new policy. I, you can do that now, yeah? I'll second. A motion and a second to adopt the new carry over uh, vacation carry over policy. Um, and I think we'll have to give the uh, I think John recommended at least a year to allow the departments to grace period. Yeah. Grace period to give the, the ones that have accrued the previous amount time to use up that vacation instead of losing it. So okay. there's no idea. Concerns or comments? Nope, no. Nope. Probably I'll take roll, a please. vote. Commissioner Wagner? Yes. Commissioner Slater? Yes. Motion approved. Okay. Next item goes to the cleaner position. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had put uh, an ad out. We went through one stop and also we put it on our, our website requesting. Uh, janitorial services to replace um, the one we had lost. Uh, actually, I think she's been gone for about a year and a half. And the applications weren't coming back as we thought. That, you know, the, the price that were, or the pay that we're offering wasn't enticing enough, apparently. But I did have um, a gentleman from the youth center come up and he was actually applying, he applied last year. Um, saying that he's very interested in cleaning, that's what he does out there. He's in more of a supervisory role out there, but because of the new building and some of the new policies, um, he he would like to um, 
look for something look for something else and he knew we were looking for this I've talked to uh, Ben York Yorkovich from the youth center which he's talking to talk to the judge they said when they went to the new building we wouldn't be we'd be training the people we could keep the people it's more electronic and more uh, modern stuff that, that you just not trying to be nice, not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I talked to Ben, and he was he was comfortable. I said, "Well, we don't want to take anybody's employees." And he said, "He said no. If if he's interested in this, he would recommend them. He very rarely takes any time off, so he's he comes with good recommendation from both. So uh, if if you're okay with that, I will talk to him and see what what we can offer him and see if we can get him to. That way, it'll help out getting getting the courts because. Uh, Dwight on second the second shift he's got a lot of buildings he needs to do and sometimes he gets a little bit behind so yeah. it'll just help him because it's, that's the cleaner we got rid of with the CSB and the RTA building yeah. so yeah I think that's good we'll talk with him and see what we can get done okay. um, we've got two more items that old business then we'll get to our um, stuff for the uh, chip program but annex cleaning quotes we did we only received um, actually received two additional ones but the one has to resubmit the quote because he only submitted for carpet only um, so he's, he's going to resubmit but these are more reasonable costs than what we, we received the first time we got one in for about 11,000 to do they're going to do all the cleaning that we requested that other than they're not going to take the drapes down and wash them they said they would dust them off and clean them off but they wouldn't take them down to so they're going to clean the carpet mm -hmm. Clean the walls. Yep. Uh, dust the drapes. Yep. Do kind of a, a what we would call a normal spring cleaning. Yep. Of no all, work walls, of wall hangings. Wipe the seats in the courtroom. Wipe all doors, handles, clean desks, shelvings, cabinets, counters, chairs, fire extinguisher boxes, restrooms. They were pretty detailed in putting everything in. They're gonna machine scrub, tile floors, strip and wax vinyl floors, hand scrub and finish all steps. Um, wash carpets, clean windows inside and out. Um, it still yeah. the eleven thousand. We still have one coming back. Uh, yeah, he he had submitted one, and I think it was seventy five hundred, and that's just for carpet cleaning. Wow. So we still have two more companies that are submitting, right, Nikki? Two yes. more that are okay. supposed to submit. Would they quotes. do this on the weekends, or would this be done on weekdays? And since the judge is here, the quotes are saying that they will do them on nights and weekends. Nights and weekends. On nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have to have certain security? Oh, I'm sure. With, uh, probably have. I mean, within the judges' confines, there. I mean, is there? You pay to have it clean. We'll take care of the security. Okay. <laughs> Eleven thousand is a lot, but if you break it down over ten years, it ain't much. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you understand what I'm saying, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll bring a pillow in. <laughs> <laughs> Three could get the newspapers to give us a break and maybe not put that 11, down, cause oh. are gonna quote here, eleven thousand down because other people are going to quote here, and we don't want to. We don't want to give them an unfair advantage. I, if, if you would, yes, I appreciate yeah. it. And we've been Is that censoring the press? <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't have to do what I tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Just a request. <laughs> yeah. And, and we've been using the detail, um, so that way we get exact comparables. So we've been using that exact detail to give to the other, other cleaning agents to quote comparables. But we've got two more that's supposed to come in, so we'll see. So Just make sure so. you knew we were still working on that. Okay. Next, I'm listed here in our old business is the courthouse. And I don't know if this is reference to the Joint Justice Center. I'm thinking is what we actually would be the correct terminology. And if anybody wanted to share any comments at this point on that, I, I had some thoughts. We talked about you know actually sharing before we shared his thoughts earlier, and I and I, uh, I, I love the idea of, of a joint city county venture. I think that's absolutely the way to go. I've always felt that way. I'm kind of a numbers guy, so any project we do has to make sense numbers-wise. And I put together some numbers. These are all preliminary uh, estimates and things like that, but I thought it would be easier if you could just see it. The, uh, it's a, according to the study, it was an $8.5 million project. It's the total cost of the project. Again, approximates. 
uh, approximately 75% county share would mean the county share would be about 6.4 million, the city would be about 2.1. Talking to the judges, the special projects money would be in this somewhere in the neighborhood of that $1.8 million. Uh, so you take the 6.4 that's the county share minus the 1.8 of the special projects money, that leaves you about 4.6 million that the general fund would have to come up with. Current debt service is approximately 600,000 per year, currently, out of a $15 million budget. I've been saying 550, but I looked at today and it was 600,000 is our, our debt service this year because we added a little bit with that uh, energy upgrade. Energy, yeah. So that's, that's a fair amount. I'm not real comfortable adding to that number, but fortunately, in 2019, not too far down the road, the debt service drops to 140,000 per year as it goes to zero in nine years from now in 2023. So what I would propose is continuing to save till 2018, four years from now. If you take 350,000 per year, which is the average of what we saved the last two years, we did 400 one year and 300 one year, if you could save 350,000 for 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, that's 1.75 million. Add that to the 700,000 we already have, and you're, you're about two and a half million dollars. So you could build an 18, four years from now, only need to borrow a little bit over two million, begin paying that back in 19 with the, with the outgoing debt that we have, our debt service payments would be lower than today and you'd have a new justice center. So that's just my thoughts on it. We've got a long way to go. I anticipate we'll talk about it more. I anticipate the city will talk about it and at some point we'll get together and come to a, a council meeting. I've talked to the mayor, I've talked to all four judges and a couple people who I feel are financial experts within the community. And I, I don't want to speak for any of those people. I think some of the time frames are a little different, but I think all thought this was a workable, may have a little difference on, on the time period. So that's kind of where I'm at on the, on the courthouse. The, the only thing I would dispute on that, and, uh, Commissioner, is the study has shown us that we will add roughly 6% or five hundred thousand dollars to the project every year that we delay because of increased costs we all know that costs every year are going to continue to escalate and what they're estimating in there is that every year we wait we're adding roughly six percent of the cost or an 8.5 million dollar project is is five hundred thousand the if we if we move forward with this the system that was that was laid out our debt reduction is $350,000 a year. That would be total debt reduction. And that would be borne by city, county, and judges. So if we delay, we're adding $500,000 a year on. If we do it now, we're adding three, we're, we're actually saving $150,000 a year. Now, uh, we also have to uh, get my, my thought process here. Is, yes, you're absolutely correct. We have debt reduction in 2019 that's going to lob off roughly about $450,000 worth of debt. And you, you look at, at, at this project realistically, if we approve the study, and that needs to be, still remains to be seen yet, and then we go through the architectural review and we get input from the citizens and we go through that whole process, probably before it, at best, the shovel would hit the ground in late 2015, which would mean completion sometime in 2016, which would mean payments would start 2017. Okay, we're already so of a of a debt reduction of 350 thousand, which the the county's got would have a portion of that. Let's just say two and a quarter to two two fifty would be the county's part. We're already putting 300 thousand in the kitty every year to go towards uh, the down payment for the Justice Center. So I believe that in 2018 and 2019, we could afford the, the, the payment because it's less than what we're putting in right now and we're saving the 500000 So I, I realize there's a, a lot of debate and a lot sure. of things that have to be worked out, but the only hole that I see in your system here is you're not taking into account the added cost that it's going to that the project is going to increase every year 
and the experts have told us six percent a year, which is uh, equivalent to five hundred thousand a year. You, you have it looking into that. So what we're saving by putting more money ahead, we're losing because of increased cost. So. And again, these are projections that are in the study. Yes. I mean, there's still the whole formal process if we're if we're moving and getting what that cost of construction is. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. And if I may, Mary, you had, I think it indicated April 7th is when council's addressing, did I read that in the paper? Yes, so we're, we're I, going I mean, to address the actual study itself. We, we're not moving forward with saying where the building's going, when it's going to be built, and that sort of thing. We're just going to discuss the study. Okay. So yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Mary, I would, uh, in my estimation, <coughs> approving the study is approving the location. That was part of the study determining the location. Now, since then, there's been another option that, that I know that has hit the papers over the last week, and you and I have, have, uh, have um, made comments to the paper, and we're both receptive to looking at that as an option. But in my mind, the study, if we approve the study, means we approve the location. Now, another study may come in that would contradict what that first study is and, and we can we can approve 10 different studies it doesn't mean that's what we're going to do but i believe approval of this commission and city council on this study in my estimation approves the location but does it mean that we're going to do it yet though mm -hmm. it definitely doesn't mean that we're going to do it yet um i i guess i disagree that by approving the study we're approving the study as presented at that location. I don't think it in any way um, forces us to locate at that location. I think it leaves open any possibilities. Yes, it approves that study at that location. Um, yes, I'll, I'll agree with that. But as far as where this building will be located, it's you know that those discussions still have to be had at some point. We're just approving the study, thanking the state for their uh, free hundred thousand dollars that they contributed towards the study that we did not have to fund locally. And, uh, and saying, yes, we agree with this study, but where it's going to be located, when it is going to be built, how it's financed, those are all things that we all have to agree on later together. Oh, absolutely. Even though we agree with the study, we can, we can elect to make amendments to the study Certainly. and decide to put it at another location. Certainly. And, and I may be a little confused, but the COG had to approve the study. I was just going to say that. To, yeah, the, the, to, because they're the ones that commissioned it. Now we've got the state. We don't have to say we approve it, disapprove it. We just take it, use the information for our own purposes. Yeah. I don't think we have to have a vote saying, you know, we approve it, disapprove it. Right. At some point, we need Someone to move forward or sure, sure. decide to just can the study and, mm -hmm. and do nothing. Well, I, think, I think we use the study as a resource. The study is a very good resource for us because it of all the details and the different aspects of this concept that it looked at, the savings, you know, the other sites, but with the new information that has entered, we, we need to look at that as well, I mean, and, and review and, and take into account what has been brought up. But like I said, yeah, we move forward. And um, I'm assuming the COG has accepted the, that they have verified that the study met the scope of whatever, that whole entire scope of what the study was to, and uh, therefore paid for the study, and that with the help of the state. So we will yeah, well, there continue. was $100,000 of taxpayers' money that was used to do the study not not general funds money but taxpayers money mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. right and we are a little past our time but i think we will jill with uh, regional planning come on up with i don't know if tiffany whoever else with the information <coughs> for chip um actually since you had me on there i'm just going to introduce on corley and tiffany shaver um and let them go ahead and um because i think they're gonna or at least don is going to talk mainly about the chip program okay thank you good morning good morning, good morning. Um, a little background uh, the state of ohio receives funds from hud to undertake certain activities related to affordable housing and for communities that are not uh, populous enough to receive those funds directly you access those funds through the state's system currently the, the <coughs> program is known as community housing improvement program or chip the county has participated since roughly 1994 the city of 
Faustoria participates, the city of Tiffin participates. Uh, so in the administration of these programs currently within Seneca County, there are basically six partners, the three grantees, uh, regional planning, which uh, helps with the administration of the county's program, SIDAC, represented by Karen Bowers, uh, who uh, assists with the city of Tiffin and the administration, and WSOS that administers and implements all three of the programs. This year, biggest changes in the history of the program, which is what brings us all here today. Uh, all the partners are represented. Uh, the mayor is here for Tiffin, uh, except for uh, Dan Thornton was, I thought, going to attend on behalf of the city of Faustoria, but he has not been able to make it. However, Tiffany and I did uh, meet with, and dis with him and discuss uh, the options that I'm going to lay before you. And by the way, Tiffany Shaver, who is with us, has recently been promoted and she is now responsible for directing the field operations for all three of the CHIP programs in Seneca County. Um, first change, it's still CHIP, but it's no longer Community Housing Improvement Program. As of this year, it'll be known as the Community Housing Impact and Preservation Program. Um, and that change in name, and I'm going to be giving you a lot of paper, and I, I apologize, but there's a lot to digest. Um, the, the change in name is reflective of some of the changes in the program activities. The state, in response to some pressure from HUD, is attempting to focus the program more on bricks and mortar kinds of things. So they are eliminating certain activities from the CHIP that we have had uh, as allowable activities in the past. In fact, the Seneca County's program and both cities' programs have included things like uh, home ownership counseling and uh, emergency monthly housing payment assistance in the last few rounds. Those are now eliminated. So we will now have housing rehabilitation, home repair, and home ownership, which is down payment assistance linked with rehab and uh, habitat new construction still allowed and tenant-based rental assistance that's the one activity that will still be allowed that is not really a bricks and mortar kind of thing so they're consolidating the program there there's also uh, another extremely important change which is why we're here talking to you because as you know we were successful in being funded for the county last year in their two-year grant so normally we wouldn't be talking chip with the commissioners until 2015. The state is attempting to streamline the program and reduce the number of grantees and they are doing that by creating a partnership opportunity for existing grantees and in fact they're incentivizing that partnership opportunity. If you look at the first page on the grant ceiling numbers for the new program you'll see that whereas last year uh, any applicant, city or county that was eligible, could apply for $400,000. This year, only single counties can apply for $400,000. Cities with a population of at least 15,000, which would include Tiffin, can apply for $350,000 on their own. And cities below 15,000, <coughs> Paustoria, can apply for a maximum of $300,000. However, if any of those entities form partnerships, then their allowable grant ceiling goes up by $50,000 each. So there's a, a monetary incentive to create partnerships. Obviously from the state standpoint that reduces the number of grants that they're handling and helps them kind of streamline their administrative program. There's a second incentive, very important, tied to the partnership, and that is that there will be points awarded for partnering talked in the past about how critical the <coughs> scoring has become in the CHIP program. There's a maximum of 100 points per applicant. When we started the CHIP program back in the 90s, you could get funded with 67 or 68 points out of 100. Last year the cutoff was over 91 points. Very, very competitive. We were fortunate to be successful last year with the county's application but uh, it gets ever more difficult. And there are fewer dollars available because there have been cuts to both the, uh, the CDBG program and the home program at the federal level. 
So there's a real incentive to consider partnering. How would this work? Uh, Faustoria and Tiffin would normally be um, applying this year for their two-year grant and Seneca County would not. This year, the way that they're setting the transition from the old program to the new program is to allow an, ex an FY13 grantee like Seneca County to join in a partnership with eligible cities and the way it would work is in the first year if there was a partnership and we were funded the county's share in the partnership normally would be 450,000 as you see here in this first year since you have an existing grant they would provide half of that amount for your share of the partnership for 225,000 I did this little chart to try and explain it. Um, sounds like Jeff would appreciate this because you yeah. like <laughs> the numbers. And I think you'll also appreciate what the, what the partnership can do in terms of bringing resources into the county. So if I can, uh, at, at the top of this chart, it shows basically three different options. The first one would be if the two cities applied separately. They could bring in 350 and 300,000, or a total of 650. The county would not be eligible to apply in that scenario. <coughs> Option two would be if the cities combined and this and just partnered together without the county. In that case, they could bring in a combined 750,000. Third scenario: if all three of the entities combine, the total resources that would come in would be 975,000. Now, the one thing that that scenario would create is it would now obligate the county to that two-year partnership, and in 2015, the county would not be eligible to reapply for their normal two-year grant. So I tried to do at the bottom to show you the alternating year-by-year -year accumulation of resources that would result from the partnership as opposed to no partnership. So we'd so, be on their cycle then. Yes, okay, okay. yes, assuming we're successful this year. So if you look, the, the orange stripes represent the even years, the blue stripes represent the odd years, and I've started with the um, existing, oh, I'm looking at it now and I got it a little bit off. Uh, the 400,000 under Seneca County should be up in the orange, not in the blue. I just now caught that. But the point is that there'd be an accumulation of resources. I projected it out to 2018. And if you look at the far right, the difference from combining overall by 2018 would be 625,000 additional dollars. So it's a pretty significant increase. Um, and I, I show at the bottom the partner gain to each individual community. Now, if you look at next year, there's actually a temporary reduction because of the shift of Seneca County from a full uh, half application this year to a full next year. So that's why I projected out for several years so you can see the cumulative effects. Bottom line being the partnership could bring more resources to be used for housing repairs and such for eligible households within the county. Now, under the partnership, one of the entities would have to step forward to be the single grantee. Uh, they've given us some guidelines on partnership agreements. And I highlighted some of the key areas of that guidance. <coughs> Any partnership, either of two or three, would result in the single grantee, and there'd be a written agreement as outlined at the bottom that what would be required to be in that agreement, that the governing bodies would endorse the, and sign the agreement, um, that it has to cover who would accept the award of funds and the fiduciary responsibility for administering the grant for the two years. All partners are obligated for the two-year period and the agreement would outline the responsibilities of all participating jurisdictions and finally it would include a method by which program income would be managed. Currently there, there is 
all three of the current CHIP grantees in the county utilize for rehab, a percentage of the, of the rehab assistance that's provided is deferred and repaid when the house is sold. So there is a small regular amount of program income that comes back to each of the three grantees. Under the partnership arrangement, the grantees would have to reach an agreement as to how that program income would be handled. So those are the general outlines of how the partnership would work. We will have more details on April 1st when the state conducts their CHIP training. Uh, Tiffany and I will be in attendance and anyone from the communities is welcome to attend as well. Generally, uh, since WSOS has been administering these programs since their inception, uh, we cover that and get the details on this year's application. We have some of those already and we'll have additional details after that April 1st meeting. A lot of information to digest. Yes, sir. If I could just kind of boil it down, what I see is the first year, if we partner, is kind of a status quo. <coughs> Second year will be a slight loss. Third year is when it really kicks in. That's when it starts to accumulate kick in terms in, of kicks additional kicks in, where then it's advantageous to all members. Is that yes. kind of the boil down? Yeah, yeah. If you look at the yeah. cumulative, because yeah. you you step back a year, there's a temporary yeah. reduction. But from there forward, the additional resources continue to accumulate. First year is a, yes, a, kind a of a, year. Kind of a boss. If I can okay. add yeah. to that, though, it will not affect your current chip that you were funded for last year. So you're going to have this chip that we're administering currently. So it's dollar-wise, correct me now if I'm wrong, you're not going to be losing any. You're just... You've got your current yeah, just, chip, it, you're just, and then you're going to get a one-year grant. Right, so it defers that second half of next year's for another cycle. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, um, we've been talking with the Justice Center about cooperation mm -hmm. and all that, and, and <clears throat> I, I've heard many people say that this era we're in now is a tremendous cooperation among cities and villages and so on, and I, I think we'd just be ahead to do that. The mechanics of it now, though, Jill handles our chip grant in conjunction with you. Yes. And I assume Sidec handles Tiffins. That's and, correct. Who does Postorius? We just work with the uh, city engineer. Okay. So right. we're the we're the sole uh, non-city partner there. <coughs> each of these entities receives a little admin from that grant. That is correct. correct. Yes. So in deciding who the who the lead agency will be might affect somebody's admin a little bit. Is there a way that we can? share that around if we pick a lead agency that these groups that are currently doing the work aren't left out? It's my belief that that is entirely uh, attainable, yes, okay. and that's, that's okay. why we invited all the partners to the table because they've all been doing a, a great job in administering these since since they began. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been working with SIDEX since the very first uh, TIPM program which goes back I don't know, four or five cycles now, and, and we've, we've been successful with that, and that's worked well, and certainly with regional planning has been a great partner with, with the county's program. So uh, I, I certainly think if uh, there's a combination and who, whoever's the grantee would have to do a request for application, hopefully they would send that to us to uh, give us the opportunity to restate why we think that you know, we could successfully write the grant and administer it. And then we would uh, see what roles could be worked out so that all the existing partners remain involved in the program. That would, I would certainly see that as a benefit to everyone. This Same question time. is more for the mayor. I mean, the mayor, are you receptive of, of some consolidation of this, of this process? Yes, we met with uh, Mr. Corley and the rest of the folks, and we fully support joining, hopefully, the city of Tiffin, the city of Fostoria, and Seneca County. Okay. It's going to... Well, number one, our biggest concern is not making sure that we achieve the full dollar amount. Our biggest concern is since partnering is taken into account now in a large amount of points, we may all three lose our CHIP grants if we do not join together. So it's not as much let's get an extra $50,000 each. You know, that may only amount to a couple of additional projects. It's let's make sure we don't lose all this money and nearly a million dollars worth of grant money between the three of us be taken away. So all three of us really are, need to be motivated. I, I truly believe so, yes. 
Okay. And we did meet with Dan Thornton at the city of Faustoria. The, the mayor was out of town at the time, but we wanted to get the process going. And he certainly indicated that from the city standpoint, they would be more than open to partnering. And in fact, he expressed that they would be open to one of the other entities taking the lead as grantee. Um, you know, I think they've got a little thin on staffing over there. <coughs> so from their standpoint, they, they, they are perfectly okay with one of the other entities stepping forward as the lead grantee. What is the time process? I'm, I'm seeing some stuff here, but that is that actually for an application? Or is that for this joint process to be done by what kind of time frame? Okay, the application is due June 6th. Okay, that, is that, uh, that means that we have to conduct two public hearings for whoever the grantee is. We have to hold the Housing Advisory Committee as we would. It would be a combined Housing Ad Advisory Committee representing all three. And <coughs> that's all have to unfold in time for us to submit the application. This year, the other key change is that it will be an electronic submission of the application this year. They're going to be rolling out a new software platform. The platform is one that they use currently for other programs. It's one that WSOS uh, has experience with in three or four of our funding sources. So they're now using that platform to create an application and a reporting process for CHIP from here forward. That means that the administrator will have to have certain people authorized to access the program, and the grantee will have to have one or two people authorized to access the program, both for submission and subsequent reporting. So that's another element that uh, that will be involved this time. That doesn't so much affect the timing, except there's a window that starts in mid Mid-May, I believe, was the date they gave us where we can <clears throat> register who's going to be the contact people and then have a period of about three weeks to complete and submit the application. The key is the two public hearings, of course, require at least 10 days' notice. One of them would be the generally each of the entities each year does. Well, Australia's formula comes under the county now, so the county and the city of Tiffin both do their general CDBG public hearing each spring and then do program-specific public hearings. So in this case, uh, there would be the general public hearing, and then the HAC meeting would establish the priorities. Those priorities are then printed in the public notice for the second hearing, which is the CHIP-specific hearing, and all that has to happen before the application can be submitted. So there's some timing issues there. Seems to me one of the, ne the, one of the first steps we need to do is, is collaborate with the city of who's going to take the lead and to make a decision as to Absolutely. how that's going to be. So is that something that we need to set up a meeting with, I would assume, regional planning, SIDAC, the mayor, and a representative of the commissioner's office to uh, um, to make that decision is, I mean, cause once we establish a lead person, then that person's going to have to be the point. Unless you're willing to concede right now, there. <laughs> We're willing to concede and allow the county to take the lead, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'm thinking we might need a little time to make sure. I don't know how that it really changes much because obviously the the factors to get figured out on the um, admin fees, the, that revenue com that comes back, that repayment part. We're already, uh, from an auditor standpoint, dealing with that just on, on our, for our own stuff. Yes. I, I so it's not a big change, it's the dollar <coughs> figure is going to be the change. If the county was a lead, probably the, the biggest change is you would have overlapping simultaneously functioning grants because the FY4 or FY13 grant runs to the end of October of 2015. The FY14 <coughs> grant would begin technically in September of this year, generally after you do the environmentals and things, you really start rolling out expenditures next January. So you'd have about a year overlap where you would have to maintain separate books for two separate CHIP grants. Okay. The entity taking, we're going to need your expertise obviously to, to see this thing through and get it done properly, but the, the entity taking the lead, I will kind of be in figure only when I mean each group will continue to do what it does uh, Tiffin will still decide their projects and be that, handled by Karen and well that would all be worked out in the in the uh, 
agreement that they, the partnership okay. agreement they talk about here, I mean, we'd probably want to have as much detail as necessary in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, can, I can say that there's a couple precedents for this with Seneca County. If we go back to the beginning of the CHIP program in the early 90s, at that time Tiffin was attempting to get their own CHIP funds. <coughs> Fostoria opted to remain under the umbrella of the city for the first 10 years or so of the, of the CHIP process. And what we had worked out at that point wasn't a written agreement, it was an informal agreement between the city of Fostoria and Seneca County that we would attempt to have a certain percentage of the funds go to residents of Faustoria, relatively reflective of the eligible numbers of households. And then we would report back to both entities on whether or not we achieved that goal, which we did. We were successful in doing that for a number of years until uh, Faustoria decided, well, you know, we've got enough need that we'll go for, for our own grant. Actually, it was when Tiffany was at the city and she was a driving force in putting together that process and we worked with her and that worked quite well. Uh, the, other, the other example would be the recently, uh, recently completed NSP program, Neighborhood Stabilization Program, which was uh, the, the state created regions. And there were actually five potential grantees, three counties and two cities, I'm sorry, three cities, three counties, six potential grantees who were invited to participate in the planning process by the state. And in that case, Seneca County uh, stepped forward and agreed to be the grantee for the region. And each of the other named entities signed a uh, participation agreement that, that could be used as a, I think, as a platform to create a chip agreement. And, and that was successful. We spent over a million dollars and had uh, quite a number of projects spread out over the region so I, you know, I, it's certainly a workable kind of a thing my suggestion is I think we're all in favor of the right the joint project is that you work with Jill and Karen and somebody from Faustoria figure out how it needs to be done tell us what we need to pass and we'll do it yeah okay I'll move it because obviously the time frame it needs to keep moving absolutely so you I'll have just, time to put it together I'll share one more an early June I'll deadline I'll share so. one more thing with you so if you have thoughts on this and necessary today those are the list of people who served on your advisory committee last year and on the Faustoria and Tiffin committees in their most recent applications. You'll see there's some common names. All of the categories listed under the Seneca County column are the same required categories this year. Not, it's, the only difference between the, the city and county required membership is on the middle of the second page last year the state added a representative of the continuum of care mm -hmm. <coughs> all going to the reappoint other. all these people this year they don't have to be the same people but all of the categories represented in in the Seneca County column so you got local government public housing authority community action agency etc all those plus the continuum of care those folks need to be invited to the table. <coughs> and we can certainly work with uh, Jill and Karen on, in terms of that, but if you have any particular, some of these, some of the names may have changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if there's three government entities involved, we'll have a few more people there, potentially. Mm -hmm. But we can certainly, uh, we can certainly work through getting, getting names and that kind of thing. So uh, we'll sit down with uh, with our two partners there, and it looks like we've got a consensus, and the county is willing, based on that, to take the lead. And we'll be happy to get with you on the next steps. As I say, we'll be at the training on April 1st, so we'll have the complete application process outlined to us at that point. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Did yeah. I forget Thank anything, you. Tiffany? You did very well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks for your attention. We look forward to working with you. Right, thank you. Should we do the, here we go, say go sewer stuff or go to our resolutions? Is Jerry Grainer here? Jerry, can we? I don't think oh, Jerry, okay. Jerry's here. Oh, okay. Jerry's here. Okay. Then I guess I can't. I didn't, <laughs> didn't think about that. I'm just looking at the, at the time frame.
Yeah, I don't believe the person from Wood County is here. Are they supposed to be here? Yes. Yes, at 11. It's not 11 yet. Okay. Yeah. Probably ought to go with that. All right, we'll move on to new business then, and we'll go with the, begin with the bill vouchers. Okay. <coughs> I have bill vouchers 34 through 37. I have a supplement to the permit appropriations for the Seneca County Sewer District 139, putting $3,500 into contract services. I have a supplement to the permitted appropriations for the Workforce Investment Act Fund 066, putting $15,000 into contract service. I have a resolution authorizing an appropriation adjustment within the revolving loan fund. 094, moving $200 from advertising to supplies, um, $200 from, I got different numbers here, I got $200 and $100, I need to check on that. Jill, do you know off the top of your hands that you're in here? It's $200 from the advertising line and splitting that into each of the other two lines. So it should only be one $200 amount. And then that 200 on the right side into those two lines. Okay. So this is the same account. So it's $100 each for $100. Yes, two okay. exactly. Sorry about that. So I have $100 going from advertising to supplies and then another $100 going from advertising to other expense for total moved of $200. I have a resolution establishing the SO Sexual Offender Registration Fund 228. I have a resolution hiring James Everett as a temporary Seneca County Assistant Dog Warden effective March 31st, 2014. I have a resolution hiring April Kramer as a temporary Seneca County Assistant Dog Warden, effective March 31st, 2014. I have a resolution authorizing table of organization and classification plan for the Seneca County Board of Commissioners, effective March 25th, 2014. I have a resolution setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids for the PLE Township Road 75-2.66 Bridge, superstructure, uh, precast reinforced concrete boxes, contract number 1401. Time will be Monday, April 14th, 2014, at 10.15 a.m. at the Seneca County Commissioner's Office. Stace, that one, I let her know that our board is at 2, but they're still going to cut the bids off at 10. Okay. I have a resolution authorizing the disposal of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit county owed property, a 2001 excavator. I'm going to skip that last word. K O B E L C O. It's a brand name. Brand name. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> excavator and a 1993 case dozer on behalf of the Seneca County Engineer. And I have a resolution authorizing the purchase of a 2014. Hydraulic excavator <laughs> through the Iowa Department of Administrative <laughs> Services Cooperative Purchasing Program on behalf of the Seneca County Engineer. How do you pronounce that, Mark? Cabalco. Cobel. Cabalco. Okay. And that's all I have. All right. I move we approve the resolution. Seconded. Any motion is second to approve the resolutions as presented. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none. <coughs> Roll call. Commissioner Leiker? Yes. Commissioner Zoller? Yes. Commissioner Stacy. Yes. I'll stand approved. And then I believe at this time I'm going to guess the folks with Mr. Greiner has did they join us? Sorry. Is that who I saw more people in the hallway? Yes. Okay. In the hallway. They're here. <laughs> They're here. Should we move to that and address that? Come on in. <laughs> Good morning. This is a reference to the new Riggle sewer project. Yes, after the, I believe you reached out to our office after seeing that we had concerns. We had a joint meeting with uh, the request of the mayor of New Riggle um, to 
see if we can help them in any way, shape, and form. So I'll let you introduce thanks. yourself and your associates. And sure, thanks. So here's a few um, cards here from our organization. I'm Jerry Greiner. I'm from the Northwestern Water and Sewer District. Uh, with me today is John Cheney, one of our uh, long-term board members. Tom Stalter, Dan Wickard, our engineer and field operations, and uh, Kay as well, our finance director. Um, um, we were a county office back in uh, many, many years, and back in 92, the commissioners decided to form a district. As all of you know, in the revised code, there's just different ways to operate business, and um, water and sewer traditionally is operated by a sanitary engineer for those counties that choose to go there. We had one. I worked for uh, Floyd Schutte in his, in his term. He was retiring. The commissioners looked then to form an organization that could do something larger than uh, county in the water and sewer field. And what we came to was a 6119 revised code organization that, um, you can look it up, it tells you basically how to run a water and sewer district from a little different perspective. And uh, particularly, ours was set up with three board members appointed by the commissioners, three appointed by the townships, and three appointed by the municipalities that chose to join. Well, Wood County's got 19 townships, 19 villages, five cities, and county commissioners. So we had a lot of parties. <coughs> Not all the parties generally agree. Um, but since that time, we now represent the 19 townships as well as a 20th township up in Scott Township at Sandusky, uh, 12 of the villages, um, one of the, or two of the cities, and obviously still for the commissioners and in those general areas that are otherwise unserved. But um, so often um, the board, and I've been there since 88, so often we get in situations much like maybe the, uh, the village of, of New Regal has here that you have a need for water or sewer services. Um, the plan that comes together isn't always the plan that works out long term. So you, you have to start to go back and look at the drawing board and say, what was the assumptions? And then knowing how the life deals you with a few surprises, how do you deal with those changes and what might be some options? And we've done this with a number of communities in our own situations, but as well, um, city of, or village of Bloomdale had water and sewer um, operations and facilities. They had operating problems, they had financial issues. Uh, Village of Weston, same type of thing. Um, took down their water plant, um, tied into the city of Bowling Green, had a lot of water loss. Their water rates weren't supporting their actual operations. Um, so we've got those and a few others. Um, problems that villages have had. The district, I think, has had good um, success at, at providing economical uh, rates, yet still providing a high level of quality. So Dan's been with me for uh, since 89. Uh, Kay and Tom's fairly new. As I mentioned, John was one of the original board members. John ran electric cooperative, and so much of what I guess he and I and, and the board and the staff have come to appreciate is it's a lot like an electric cooperative, and that's part of what John's background was, trying to find an economical way to serve users on a long-term basis in an affordable fashion and too often that means having to regionalize, having to um, merge up with your partners and your other community sometimes to share resources and look at options. So the district got a lot to offer, um, whether it's simply coming in and consulting, we're glad to do that for free. I mean part of again the role we have here is a regional provider. We think there's things we can share with folks uh, without billing you like a consultant, without being led down a path perhaps like a law engineering firm or, or consulting groups. You know, we can be pretty common sense and rational in our approach that given what you're dealt with, what your problems could be, and then give you some operators, some financials, some engineering options that we think are proven from uh, past performance. Um, so I guess that was the idea. Uh, John had seen the, a couple articles in the newspaper. Um, we've done a little bit of background um, researching with EPA and with USDA and some of the folks. We've got a little bit of an idea of, of what you got, but obviously we don't uh, have good overall understanding. So if there's stuff we can uh, talk about today, great. If it's a follow-up conversation with you or a subcommittee, whatever might work, and we'll be glad to uh, help you in any manner we can and we find possible. Um, I, I guess I failed to mention we get water and sewer services from Faustoria. We have sewer customers north of Faustoria in some residential areas. We have uh, Charter Steel is a big water and sewer user there north on 23. We have 15,000 customers total that get served by either Toledo, Oregon, Bowling Green, Lucas County, Perrysburg, Faustoria, or Bloomdale. So we've got regional plants that either we own, in most of those cases we simply buy from those larger cities and their regional plants, and then we have a middleman. We move the water or sewer through the pipes. 
So hopefully it gives you a little bit of background. Mm -hmm. um, our website's fairly nicely done. I brought a few bro brochures talk about what a district is, what we do. But this is what we do. Uh, we get 65 employees um, wow. that look at problems every which way. And I got a nice uh, senior management staff right now that's been with me for a lot of years that have looked at problems in a lot of different directions, a lot of angles. So um, something like that could be of help to you. I'd be glad to sit down with you anytime. How does this differ from RCAP? Well, our cap is funded through Ohio EPA, through federal EPA, for training for operators and staffing. Um, they're semi-professional in their backgrounds as individuals, at least the people I've met through the years. Um, they don't have day-to-day -day operating experience or, or financing experience or engineering experience on operating a system. Uh, I think they do a nice job as consultants on the front end for um, financing of projects. I think they do a fairly good job troubleshooting problems once they become apparent, but unfortunately they just don't have the day-to-day -day operating experience of that organization like we do. But how would you interact with the engineer? Because we don't mean to replace them. Really the responsibility. Yeah. The commissioners have the responsibility and the, and the engineer is, is, is our one of the Man. best, one of the best things our commissioners did years ago, and they were, they wring their hands when I talked to them. Cause it's been a few commissioners. Is, I'm glad we got rid of water and sewer problems. <laughs> yeah, they basically <laughs> handed them off because they just don't have enough time. So if your county is like many, your county engineer's got his hands full of other issues that he tends to get paid for. Sometimes dealing with water and sanitary sewer isn't exactly priorities, mm -hmm. and yet we do. I mean, that's why we have some experience with types of of design and types of operational issues that may or may not work depending on the depth, uh, the type of sewer, the type of the, the area, the type of communities, the type of treatment systems maybe they're working with, the type of contracts. Uh, Faustoria, I've got a contract like yours, not yours, with New Regals from Faustoria. It's okay, um, but going into it, you know, there's some potholes, I guess, there that, that you got to be aware of, and then what do you do if you start to see some problems with your contract? How do you can't get out of the contract. How do you work within that then to operate a system in an efficient manner then that doesn't um, bleed you? And what's okay, so, so I understand. So no cost to the county that you would come in and you would evaluate this, the system that we have. Let me turn this thing off. Uh, evaluate the system that we have and then make recommendations how to to fix it. Solve the problem yeah, or, or, or work with our cast and work with your county engineer. If they've got ideas, they just want to bounce them off somebody. Short of going out to a consultant or to a contractor, that's what we're there for. We do it to ourselves. Where does your revenue come? I guess it's we have fifteen thousand customers. They pay monthly water and sewer bills. Um, our bill, our customers receive a bill with two components: a treatment cost. So if you're a customer in Wabridge and your treatment comes from City of Toledo, you're paying Toledo's treatment cost with the district's operation and maintenance. So our, our revenue is that operation and maintenance component of every customer's bill. So whether we're doing it here or whether we're more likely doing it for our own customers in our own communities, that's the troubleshooting, that's the uh, review that I guess we do on a regular basis of our own system. So a, a neighbor. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just being a good neighbor. Yeah, I mean, in this particular case, I was here before, I don't know if you all were, but oh, about two or three years ago, Lyle and a couple of our board members made the, uh, the circuit. We stopped at Sandusky, Ottawa, here, um, we didn't get, get to Hancock, uh, got to Fulton, never did get to Lucas County. But we tried to reach out to the county commissioners and say, unless you've got a full-time sanitary engineer or a good engineering um, group, um, there's water and sewer issues that happen. Um, up there at um, Rising Sun, we yeah. built a sewer that was under orders for the community and obviously put it on the side of the road. It would only make sense to serve both sides of 23. Well, the other side was Scott Township. You know, the sewage didn't know what county it was in, so we <laughs> served those 40 customers in Scott Township because the Scott Town Township trustees said it only makes some sense here. We've got the same problems they have over there. Why aren't you representing us? And we said, fine, join the district. Doesn't cost anything. And we'll just go forward with USDA, borrow additional money, serve those customers with the same grant money, and Rising Sun became a kind of multi-county project. So we, we, we flow over to both sides of the road too often. And that's just what we do. Our uh, engineer here is Mark Zimmerman. And I don't know, Mark, if you have any questions, Anything? I mean, I put you on spot, but if you 
I, I, I don't. I mean, our, our, our issues are specific to the village of New Regal, not to the district as a whole. I mean, every other plant and uh, the area that we serve is functioning, you know, we, very well. Good. Uh, we inherited a year ago, uh, New Regal, and the mayor's here. Uh, Larry built a system, so maybe he can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he inherited so, this. Okay, he inherited this. Uh, well, I say that because he's uh, he's he's a New Regal guy. So he's the mayor now, and the uh, the village uh, built the system, uh, and we inherited it. Uh, I don't know a year and a half ago, um, but maybe you could maybe some of the. Design how it started, uh, what, where where it is, and why it is, why it exists, and what happened in the months following. So. Fred was at a meeting with us here a few weeks ago, and I called the meeting. We had quite a quite a good uh, selection of people there to help us out and everything else. And you know, I'm very interested in hearing you and stuff like this on this. What happened was a plant was built with the intentions of farmland foods, which was a very good sized meat backing plant, and they pulled out without uh, before the sewer was hooked up. Okay. They were supposed to pay 60% of the total operation, 60% of the debt, and if they left, the whole thing is stuck on the village in Uriel. And it was very interesting. The plans showed uh, originally a six-inch tile going from the village in Uriel to, to Faustoria. Somewhere along the line, it got changed and went to a 10-inch tile. So now, 10-inch tile is good for a million gallons a day, is what I've been told, and Fred has been told. And now, uh, so the sewage leaves Uriel a little bit, about 30,000 gallons a day, until it gets to halfway to foster our pump station, it, it becomes septic. So then we have to put so much chemical in it to try to keep the smell down and everything else. Well, and the acid is ate away at all the components and everything else. And you've probably seen this a million times happen already and everything else. So I got together with Fred and that after Mark got a notice from the city of Fostoria that the rates were, went increased real bad. And so we're just trying to see if we can get some help because our sewer bills are going to be right at close to $100 a month. Is that correct, Mark? Uh, they could be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And we should be seeing that when pretty soon. Uh, well, I think we're waiting until this whole problem. Right? We haven't changed anything because we did. We're waiting to see if there are any solutions. Solutions. Can so. would, would it be feasible to take a look at the construction plans or whatever plans we have? Plans and numbers. Jill's got some numbers with the with that as well, and just take a look at it. And see yeah, our, fin our finance you? director Dave Cook is our assistant. Case came in to replace him. He was just trying to walk his way back in. How were the rates first built? What was the intent? What was what was set aside for mm -hmm. future treatment costs for for Fostoria? What was your operation maintenance portion? Was there anything in there for capital improvements or or um, surprises like? Um, like uh, an additional chemical. So that's all just, RCAP does a rate review, and the commissioner mentioned that. Um, and that they do a nice job with that. They don't always have the, the solution though, how do you change it? I mean, you hate to revamp your rates, but on the other hand, things have changed. You gotta revamp your rates and say, how are we gonna be able to afford this? Because it's not gonna get any better the next two, three, four, five, 10, 20, 30 years. You're still gonna pay false tariff for treatment, and you're still gonna have ongoing operating costs. So unless you increase revenue, decrease expenses, you're stuck. You're stuck in the between. So you want to have a plan that yeah. you would think until type of user comes back, you know, what can you do for the user in the meantime to make it affordable without making it worse? One thing we did talk about back when Farmland Foods was there, uh, EPA and I said we could not have our own lagoon treatment system because of all the chemical use and uh, everything about Farmland Foods. And I did right up front, you can ask Fred, at that meeting, I asked the EPA director right there at that meeting, I said if there would be a way that we could get 100% uh, paid grant free for our own treatment plant, would that be a possibility we could do that now instead of going to Fostoria? And he said, oh yes, that'd be a chance, you know, but that all depends if there's any grant money <coughs> available and everything else because we can't afford to put any more debt on because then that's more payment to get. You know, we're, we're ripped any which way you look at it. We're approximately $60,000 a year, I think, right, Mark, for treatment to Fostoria? Uh, we were 72 last year, and I'm expecting 80 this year. So, so we we're yeah, we're over 72 thousand dollars. Yeah, you treatment. want your flow to go the other way when you lose users. You certainly do, right? <laughs> exactly. It's not working, right? Huh? Yeah. And you know the 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 system, you know, and, and there are areas where we're 20 plus feet deep. 32 front. 32 feet deep with the system. With gravity. Uh, and the infiltration rates. Uh, what we're pumping to Fostoria exceeds every. 
uh, an estimate of what the village should be producing. Uh, so we know we have a, a lot of INI. We have, you know, it's been camered three times. Uh, it's been fixed a couple of times, but, you know, based on construction history that, that, you know, we weren't involved with the construction of it, but from what we understand is that there were construction problems uh, with backfill, the type of material, uh, pipe material that was used, um, to the point where, you know, joints are leaking at such a rate uh, that, uh, and, and with the depth we're dealing with, with the sewers right down the middle of the streets, you know, we can't just go dig up a sewer and fix it, uh, you know, without ex digging up the entire town. You need a big issue, um, too, money for to replace the road, and it just happens to... Well, actually, we just, <laughs> <same time>. we <laughs> just finally got an issue, it, the issue on money to, uh, to pave the roads, uh, and it's, you know, after, what, 10 years? Uh, so, you know, we have uh, construction maintenance issues uh, that are built on top of uh, uh, losing a major user, uh, on top of increased uh, per, you know, percentage of, of, of uh, treatment costs. Uh, so costs on top of some costs, and, you know, we, we lose users more than we uh, gain them. So And that uh, inventory is a problem everybody has. Right. And, but yet it just eats away your the bottom line money you could right. have used otherwise to underwrite the rates. What the operations guys will tell you is more often than not, you'll fix some of that. It ultimately comes down to the individual service laterals. How did the line get connected to the homes and how tight mm -hmm. are those systems? And, and there's great money for that, you know, to find the worst offenders and you know, try to fix, get the downspouts out, get the sump pumps out, yeah. get the things out. I think that's, that's, that. that's all been taken care of. And that's great. What, what do you need, I guess, to make recommendations? Well, just a follow-up meeting. I mean, okay. if you have a two or three, like, obviously, okay. gentlemen like that are well understanding what they've got. And okay. If you're open to something, I would be glad to come back another day and meet with them further and Great. talk about where Great. they've been, what the consultants have taken them, and where RCAP may be involved if they want to be involved, bring them in the picture. I mean, it's, it's almost a roundtable discussion with a number of folks that they have a, a real serious interest in seeing um, mm -hmm. improvements and uh, making changes that are affordable and aren't going to cost more money. Okay. Um, so I mean, the mayor and Mark are open to that. And uh, I, I mean, that's anything we can do to reduce that. <laughs> that. I, I, I certainly don't want to recommend increasing rates. Yeah, so. exactly. How so soon, we have to pay how bills, soon so. are you going there? I'm sorry? How soon do you have to make that decision? Uh, three months ago. Uh, <laughs> current calendar, then, in other words. We're going to have to raise rates temporarily. This solution isn't going to happen quick enough to avoid a rate increase. At. When's your when's your debt payment due? Uh, well, we do uh, October. October. All right. So you got to generate a certain amount of cash by October to pay the bill. Right. We have billions come out every three months. And, you know, we said rates are going to go up effective January one. So uh, at the end of March. Coming here, yeah, first the, we're going to have to have a problem. The, the, so the room will be full by April yeah. when the first bill goes yeah. out. And, yeah, and the billing March. cycles is yeah. due week. right now. Yeah. We're doing yeah. this, this week. week. We're so. sending it out. Yeah, that'll, that'll get some Not interest. Bad. So in this so. billing cycle, there's no increase. I, I no. no, there there isn't. I mean, we have no. Other <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't just raise rates. So <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so okay. and we have and yeah. we were waiting to. So yeah, it gives you five months of revenue stream then to make your October payment. So obviously, take a look at the cash balance, make sure that you're going to be there <laughs> quickly. Right. Otherwise, your rating increase may need to be worse. To well, get and that's the exact pay. problem: is that if we decide we have to raise rates and we didn't do it for the first quarter, and we need to make up the first quarter, we may make it up the first quarter in the last three, and that raises the yeah. rates even. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty right. exciting. You know, sewage isn't stopping <laughs> while we go through this process. So I don't, I don't, want it to you don't that think way. we should do it in this first quarter. I think we should. I think we should have done it two months ago. I, I, yeah. I'm thinking we should. Well, I, ab absolutely. You need to. I mean, hopefully we could correct some problems down the road. But right now we have to run with the parameters we got, and we got enough have enough money in the bank to be able to make the bank now, payment in October. So rates need to go up now. Right. And Jill and I did go through the numbers, and we did find some reductions. Uh, we did have a. Uh, an extra uh, 2012 loan payment that came out in 2013. Uh, we did uh, yeah. fill up our uh, nitrate tanks uh, or, uh, uh, at the end of the year, which means we had that cost at the end of, of, of 13 that we aren't going to have to have in 14. There are some costs we can reduce, so that 303 number that we were quoting is not, it doesn't need to be that high, um, but they do need to go up uh, by about 18 to $20 a month. 
So our, is, is it possible we can take the action to make that happen now? I'm looking at Joe because I know you're ready to do the. Well, I didn't. Bill. I don't have those. I didn't bring. Yeah, that. you don't have it today, but we're, we're, today, we're currently at sixty-eight dollars. So you're saying possibly eighty-eight. Right. Okay. But we meet on Thursday. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got it all at the office. I just didn't bring it. I didn't realize we were. Well, I think we need to make that. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. And, and get that implemented immediately. Yeah. And then in the meantime, if with this group, if we can start some communication between the engineer, the city of uh, or the village of New Rigo, and and the commissioners and, okay. and yeah. do some brain. Uh, basic we're talking about is you want to try to assess where we are. And maybe make some recommendations of. Well, to the low rate issue, you could pray for a dry spring in summer to keep your infiltration <laughs> running down. So you have less <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not sure 32 feet deep it ever gets dry though. So. <laughs> but you know, just little things like that. Saying, know, how's the cash flow going to work? How are you going to justify the increase? And how quick can you generate to satisfy USDA so payment comes in on time? Well, let's set up a meeting. Oh, yeah. Let's get that yeah. calendars coordinated and you can. Yeah. If we can email off Stacey, this I'm, I'm glad to be our representative. Yeah. Yeah. Between uh, uh, the mayor, the engineer, and, and uh, Holly, if you're willing to yeah. chair that, there. Sounds good. Sure. We'll get an email right. back moving this afternoon, get some dates. We're okay. pretty flexible. John, anything you want to say? John's been on with this a long time and has seen a similar world from the electric site as well. No, I think we covered it pretty well. <laughs> okay. Well, thank, you. Thank, right, you. thank you. Thank you, you very much appreciate for your it. offer. Yep. Thank you. Very much appreciate it. Takes care of all anticipated uh, scheduled stuff. We'll move to citizens' comments. Yeah. This time, is there anyone that's got some citizens' comments, general comments for us from the public? Hi. Okay. Okay. Martin. I am seeing none. Can I just mention one thing? Sure. I'm sorry I did a Fred and I didn't put it on the <laughs> 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 I, I did a Fred and I didn't put my comment on the uh, agenda. He's adding at the end of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, we signed the thing for Cindy Scherter. I see she has an open house Friday. Maybe we can make it out there Friday. Mark and I have to go to Mansfield for issue one, but hopefully I'll be back by then. Or could we, well, Thursday after. I mean, we go out Thursday, early, sure. But I won't be back from Grand Rapids on Friday. Fine. We go out Thursday. And time to be out there. What is it, Thursday after board? I think it's, it's squad after, or whoever can. If we want to take it. That's why, yeah. Then we can all three be there, perhaps. Okay. Okay, well, what is this? This Thursday? Yeah. Um, is that when DeWine's going to be in Tiffin? I, or is that that's the following week? I think that's the following week. I'm fine. I have that on my screen. Jill, did you have something else? Um, Commissioner Zoller was um, mentioned GIS. Were you going to talk today about GIS? You asked me to come over. Yeah, um, you know, when you walked in here, I couldn't remember what we talked about yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I did ask you to come over too. To talk Kinda about the, a, oh, oh, the, the financing. That, yes. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, uh, brain dead there for a <laughs> second. Um, what uh, I asked Jill is, is there's been a lot of discussion over the last year or so on GIS and how to fund it and as we move forward with that we need to have an understanding from the commissioners and are willing to support was the 45 percent of the cost of the GIS uh, it's going to be broken down that uh, regional planning will pay for a part of it the auditor will pay for a part of it the engineer will pay for a part of it but if the before we move forward with it, we have to get a, a consensus from the commissioners. Are we willing to support 45% of it? If not, then anything that they move to go forward with is really kind of a moot point. So I thought it was time that we kind of bring that up yeah. to and, the commissioners and see where our yeah. level of support is. And if I, I don't want go to ahead. just at, at, as part of this project and, and as part of what the commissioners are um, looking too, when they, when they do a commitment, it, it, you know, you choose to do that. I, a year and a half or so ago, I came to you with letters from the Bar Association about uh, the number of times that the tax map office is closed uh, because we have one employee and anytime she's on vacation, sick, has sick kids, uh, or any other appointments, the office is closed. 
Um, you had committed at that time to allowing me to hire a part-time employee, uh, which I uh, went out several times looking for employees. Uh, because of what we are able to pay, because of the current state of uh, that most uh, employees are going to need insurance, you know, when they, when they come to work, a part-time employee just didn't work out as, as far as what people were willing to work for. Um, so, although the commitment and, and the cost would still be there, I am looking at taking this position, or Jill and I are, and wrapping that up into saying that instead of having a part-time employee at the tax map office, we would have a full-time employee under my um, uh, supervision um, at the tax map office to cover that side of it as well. So even though you would be committing to that 45%, there is already a substantial commitment out there by the commissioners to hire a part-time employee. And I know that with a full-time employee, I'll be able to get somebody in. We'll so be able to get you're, somebody you're in. you're saying that the uh, GIS person would also would preside in the taps, tax mass area and they would be able to, to help service in that function too. Right, maybe not checking deeds, maybe not uh, you know at, at first and maybe not uh, doing the quality of service that Don does at the tax map office, but certainly the office would be open for uh, taking in, uh, providing, you know, doing the copies, doing the help that the general public needs when they come in. Uh, at least there's a place to, to come. And over time, you know, it takes years to learn that. So that that's an art uh, to learn that. And over time, that person would also learn how to read and approve deeds as well. So, yeah. And I believe 45%, we were talking somewhere around 28,000 was the Responsibility yeah. from the commission. Twenty-eight, thirty. Yeah, I mean, in that thirty, like that. thirty thousand. And range. did we budget that in this year? No, no. we did not. The, the forty-five is based on what the county would use of that person's time. I assume. That is, I was at regional planning when they announced yeah. that, but I've kind of forgotten that. That's based on what they would use. Ten percent would be engineer or whatever. And that's our that's our best estimate. Yes, yes. Yeah. and it's it, it's a guess. I mean, to be honest, we we sat down, the committee did, and said, where do we think these these numbers are, and and those were our best estimate. Well, I think. Have, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Have the other partners all come forward or have agreed to do what they're contributing? I mean, obviously we know Mark and Julie have, but yeah, the health district, I believe Marjorie did, mm -hmm. and uh, maintenance. All that, everything else, everybody's on board. Um, EMA, I have not received uh, confirmation from. Well, we control his part. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it's it's almost a must in this day and age to have a yeah a GIS person. I'm I'm not a technology guy. Technology doesn't like me, but it, it's almost a must. I think for the the public's using that, we're going to have to have to ease into it. Is soil and water going to keep their separate from us? Do you know? They get theirs for through um, NR NRCS. NRCS. They get their software, but they are. They, are they a contributor? They are the commissioners, I think, aren't oh. they? Oh, ditch maintenance. Yeah, ditch maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the realm of people that use the system don't even know that they use the system. For instance, our entire 911 system, the E911 is based on the uh, uh, the mapping that was done. Uh, and, and we have been updating and maintaining that system. Uh, I mean, it, all so basically all public safety does run through it, even though it's not maybe recognized that that's where public safety gets their addressing, but that's where all of it comes from, is through our GIS system. So. Uh, you know, the ditch maintenance, all of our watersheds now, all of the assessments come from the watersheds that are developed and built based on our, our GIS system. So that there are places and people that utilize the system without having any idea how actually tied to this <coughs> system they are. So again, what we're looking for is a confirmation from the commissioners that we're willing to support 45% of that, of the cost of that department. because. Again, my concern was if if the commissioners are not, are unwilling to do it, the avenue that as we've been able to hammer out over the last basically year, year and a half, is void. Then then that's not going to work. Then there's other options that have to be looked at. And and this this proposal was really the best option that we could share the service because I, I know back a year ago there was some discussion on 
the engineer hiring a full-time person and the auditor fire hiring a full-time person and this way we hammered out a, a thing that we can combine those services and only hire one person but again the commissioners have got a pony up here and, and cover part of it if that's what we want them to proceed with but again that does take into account the tax map position as well yeah. right. so, so we may have budgeted we that yeah there's yeah so that will be what yeah. it it, what, what I was told is that the money would not go into the tax map fund at that time, but it was budgeted in the yeah. other yeah. revenue. Yeah. How much do we budget for tax map? I don't remember. I so don't in other words, the Some roughly $30,000 may not be a total hit to the general fund. Some of it may already be allocated, so it's... Yeah, I think I looked that up at the time of this meeting, and so I don't, that, those notes are in there. But um, on page 14, I'm looking at, is this the... Because 20, I'm sorry, 28, 45 percent of the 73,200 comes out to a little higher than 28, or is it just the employee line? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know where the 28 or 30. I mean, it was in that area, but the salary per person. It's, it's, the, it's the, the total annual cost of that person, not those the equipment, not the you know the first no, year investment and, is one thing. Actually, be, be, while we put this together. Um, and I don't want to be doing all talking, but while we put this together, <laughs> I always seem to be doing a lot of talking. About um, you know, we were looking at needing computers, additional equipment, scanners, plotters to, to start a, a program. When we decided to kind of run this all into the realm of uh, the tax map office, um, I've got uh, a, a, a good um, plotter there. I've got uh, an extra computer there. Uh, I've got the equipment that we need, uh, you know, maybe generating or needing more paper, um, paper relatively inexpensive. Um, you know, as far as needing a, a scanner, the uh, uh, system that we have up at TaxMap is a copier right now, but we built a system that, you know, easily and relatively inexpensively can have a scanner attachment put on it. So instead of $8,500 for a scanner plotter, we might be looking at thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars for the entire package of, of, of scanning that we would need to do um, we would not need any computers at thirty five hundred dollars because I have it um, already for this year as far as purchasing the software um, which is about an eight thousand dollar hit uh, at first um, I through the county engineer's office already purchased that because I need it um, so the maintenance fees would need to be provided in the years future um, but the purchase of the software does not, uh, we already took care of that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these costs that are, are hard here um, are actually pretty soft costs to the, to the program because we've already paid for them. Okay. So, so beyond everybody's share, Joe, of the, um, of the position, those, any type of those annual things, that's going to be coming out of regional planning. I guess I just want to make sure I understand that. Or is there going to be other expenses coming our way aside from the employee and the the cost of that employee or is it of the whole thing because the 73 200 is is not those computer costs that mark you just said we probably wouldn't have anyway right and that technology equipment um it's just the it says the employees supply software conference travel that stuff that's so about 33,000. and i like i said we had to have had close to 20 in i'm thinking in the part-time Mm -hmm. position and getting that was us alone right versus this being with many parties playing into it I'm in support of it without a problem I just wanted to make sure we were what I was looking at was correct yeah you are and, and like I said, I'm not sure the 28 or 30 but yeah if it's 33 it's 33 if it's, it's 35 percent yeah, okay I guess you've got consensus that we're, we're on board for that so okay. you can proceed good thank you thank you Other questions or why well, you got me <laughs> well, advise on. Anything more? Is that Gonna do some call for inspections. See you Friday. The sun shining. So yeah. When Thanks. when are you looking at? Cause I was out to soil and water yesterday on start doing uh, some of the scope work in New Rigo. I, oh, I don't know. We need to put that package together. It, it you have to understand in order to put a camera into a sewer that that's deep, you have to go down in there, which requires respiration. It requires mm -hmm. back trucks. There's you can't just go down into a 20 foot sewer. There's no air down there. So that's I thought that's what the scope, the camera would. We got to get it down there. 
Well, you, you can't do that out. from up top. You can do that below. I mean, it's on a string and a cable, and you got to. He's got a little midget he puts down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They put the cables to my feet, and I go down in there and guide it in there. So, yeah. No, it's not just. He's down from his ankles. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if it gets stuck, you, I mean, no matter what, you got to get in there. So, you know, so it's not a, this isn't a four foot deep sore. This is, this is a big time. So these are deep. There's a lot of. We can work at a time frame. Oh, we will, but I guarantee it's going to be warm. <laughs> I'm not doing it when it's 10. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I realize it's probably going to be May, June, but be, uh, talking with Tia yesterday that, uh, I mean, they're now starting in their real busy season and so forth. It's just a matter of coordinating the time. And right, and we will, but, you know, I don't mind being wet, don't mind being cold, but I'm not going to be wet and cold. Wet, cold, and steamy. Especially what I'm going to be wet with when I'm in here. So. Yeah. Part of the job. So, but thanks. Check You're out always entertaining, Mark. Thank you. Check that no EMS out of service comments. schedule before you go down. Oh, very just good. Just exactly. <laughs> Make sure I get some service. <laughs> just because I forget it. I don't want to hear it. There's no yeah. other general what happened, public comments for the good of the order. I move we adjourn. Second. In. Moved and seconded. We're adjourned. We will stay adjourned. Thank you. 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 Thank you.